The following video you are about to watch is nothing to do with film or anatomy. Instead, it is an informative video about the coaching process research on my PhD trajectory. I have created the video in the hopes that you will feel motivated to participate in my study. Following the video section, you will find details on how I imagine you may participate. If this does not interest you, you may stay and still enjoy it, or feel free to exit the video now. I'm looking forward to your participation to help progress the professionalization of coaching and the enhancement of coaching knowledge in the service of our clients and client organizations. Let's say you are redecorating your home and you install two pendulum clocks on your wall. In 1665, Dutch scientist Christian Huygens found that they will eventually synchronize and start swinging through the seconds in perfect unison, which has also been tested on metronomes. It is as if it were no longer possible to recognize the pendulums individually. Each pendulum would contain information in all the others. Why is that? Well, finding the answer requires a scientific theory that is called systems dynamic theory, which proposes that in one way or another, everything is connected to each other in one overall system. Fish swarms use it as a survival mechanism, and they can be applied to studies ranging from biology to engineering to sports. People do it too. For instance, synchrony looks to be a useful indicator of how attuned a caregiver is to an infant. Not having synchrony with the mother presents a host of risks to babies and the adults they will become. You don't even have to speak evidently. Researchers suggest that quietly sitting next to a partner is sufficient to generate synchrony. I think this is pretty wild. Put people in pairs, small groups or organizations and they start syncing up. They will synchronize the movements of their bodies, parts of their bodies, or even their vocalizations. However, interpersonal coordination is not to be confused with mimicry, which refers to the imitation of others' actions and thereby entails a time lag. In contrast, interpersonal synchrony occurs when the movements of two or more people overlap in time, which is characterized by behaviors occurring in what we call in phase, in contrast with antiphase coordination. Although both are stable modes of coordination, in phase synchrony is found to be the more stable mode. How do systems dynamic theory and interpersonal synchrony relate to goal attainment in coaching? The answer starts with a question How many things do we do in our lives individually? Almost nothing. But leadership, organizational change management, democracies, and coaching. These require relationships and by studying synchrony we gain access to dynamics between people, that is also between client and coach. This approach is a new direction for research in coaching psychology, which has so long been preoccupied with coaching techniques and what coaches need to do to support our clients' goal attainment. So this study reflects a quiet shift in our discipline's fundamental assumptions. Perhaps the brain expects to be in relationship with others since that makes staying protected and finding resources so much easier. The earliest and best documented variety is behavioral synchrony. It is also the theme of this study. But of course, interpersonal synchrony is not limited to behavioral synchrony, but includes synchrony on neural, physiological and affective levels. However, our focus is on synchrony via whole body movement, it's feelings of trust and closeness between people. In coaching, Trust and closeness are found to be two main predictors of coaching effectiveness. So the state of play is that interpersonal synchrony has not been studied in connection with trust and rapport in coaching yet. What's in for our clients and client organizations? Who cares? Organizational psychologists, for one, think that it may enable groups to mitigate the free rider problem and more successfully coordinate in taking potentially costly social action. 
So the capacity to establish interpersonal synchrony is fundamental to human beings because it constitutes the basis for social connection and understanding. That's why troops march in formation and churchgoers sing in unison. Choreography breeds closeness. For good or for ill in a relationship, synchrony magnifies whatever dynamics are going back and forth between people. So what's the issue? The vast majority of existing research in coaching and other social sciences investigating relationship dynamics is associative. So it's hard to tease apart what causes what. Are couples in fraught relationships escalating their arguments because their synchrony levels are high? Or because their partner just isn't listening? Or a combination of both? Or something different? Only recently have experiments established a causal link between interpersonal synchrony and prosocial behavior, empathy, and basically almost every social interaction. However, no quantitative study to date has investigated the effects of in sync on goal attainment in coaching. Furthermore, little is known about the variables that directly or indirectly influence interpersonal synchrony's potential effects on social outcomes, including clients' goal attainment. So what are we interested to find? Some studies indicate that our felt sense of what is going on for us or how we are may be a gateway to synchrony. Our way to reason is based on psychotherapeutic findings. Coaches, for whom it may be easier to simulate the body states of others, will be more empathic, which then enhances clients' capacity to emotionally self-regulate or become socially sensitive and environmentally receptive which again is believed to foster clients' goal attainment in their own organizational systems. While outcomes are not definitive, they fall in line with what the function of synchrony may be. The better coaches feel themselves, the better they can feel for and maybe share feelings with clients. This is being more as a relevant skill for both the coach to enable the client to feel attuned with them and a client to self-regulate and thus attain their goals beyond coaching. So we want to investigate the extent to which synchrony strengthens the coach-client relationship and the strength of the coach-client relationship as measured by motion energy analysis as an objective means of measuring whole body movement is likely to create sustainable outcomes for clients in their organizational systems. We propose that clients' goal attainment through the long-lasting beneficial effects of interpersonal synchrony will create the ripple effect of pro-social behavior in their organizations. Therefore, we invite you to participate in this project to find out with us if it's true that coaches need to be more and do less in coaching to make more insightful meaning of why clients do what they do in coaching.